Hey everyone, it's Mike again. I'm uh, back real, to a real quick video here. Um, gonna show some vinyl finds so I can get these records off my floor and into the bins. So here we go. Um, this is all stuff that, some of the stuff I bought recently at the InGroove uh, here in Scottsdale. Um, and then the rest were just things that I've had sitting around that I've forgotten to put in past vinyl finds. And so I wanted to include them in this one. So here we go. Uh, the first one here is uh, this I got at the InGroove. Uh, always happy to find um, Killing Joke records. And I found that uh, I made a Killing Joke video a while back and uh, I was missing some records and I was kind of justifying to myself, well, I'm not really crazy about this record and that record, so I don't really care if I have them on vinyl. But then I see them in the stores, I'm like, oh, I gotta have that. So uh, this is one of those, uh, Absolute Descent. Uh, this came out in 2010. Um, this was their first release after their bassist, uh, Raven, passed away. And it's the first album in 28 years at that point that the entire original band uh, got back together to, to record an album. So uh, Youth, uh, the basis, the original basis for Killing Joe of Youth, uh, he came back on and to, into the lineup uh, so that the entire band was finally back together and they put out this album. Uh, it's a dual, it's a two record release. Uh, you open it up and it's got the info on there and a cool photo. And in the back, it's really nice photography here. Uh, for this album. It's it's a true like double record. It's not just uh, a single record that's been split out. It's got a lot of songs on it. And I think it's got, yeah, it's got a couple of bonus tracks too on this. Um, so that's what the cover looks like. The original cover though, it didn't have the stamp thing. It was just this image kind of blown out to the full frame. But on this, I think this is a reissue. It might've been a record store day uh, reissue actually, um, not too long ago and uh, they made it into this kind of stamp motif. Uh, let's see, that's the cover, the uh, inner sleeves, uh, more of the same, the, the lyrics, and then this kind of, I don't know, it reminds me of the Wicker Man kind of uh, figure there. And then more of the same uh, lyrics, 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 so you can sing along with jazz and have a whole lot of fun with that. It came with a poster too, and this poster cracks me up. Uh, it's, I don't know, it's so half-assed. It's these kind of a collage, I guess, of these images of the band and kind of thrown together. And Jazz looks like some kind of vampire from the 80s. And uh, Jordy, you can't even tell that that's Jordy. I, I look at that photo, that could be literally anybody uh, in that photo. And maybe maybe Jordy wasn't available and they did just put somebody in there. Uh, Big Paul Ferguson, he actually looks like the most normal, uh, the drummer out of the whole band. And then Youth here, it's like, hey, we're gonna take some pictures. We're gonna have these pictures for this new album that we've got out, and this is the first time you've been in the band in 28 years. Why don't you go throw that golf visor on? That'll look really good. Uh, so he's looking really sharp and dapper with that uh, golf visor, so good job. Uh, this, again, I said a double record, and it comes in these kind of, I don't know, tangerine kind of colored, uh, colored vinyl, so really nice release, actually. And it was like a really good price too. I would think for something like that, that it would have been a, uh, I'd have to give up the rights to a future child or something, but man, it was actually a really good price. So happy about that one. Killing Joke, always love having Killing Joke, more Killing Joke uh, into my collection. Still got a few to go. Uh, the next one I found, Daniel Dax, Dark Adapted Eye. I used to have this on CD back in my college days. The reason, the way that I found myself uh, learning about Daniel Dax, this is back in the mid, mid to late 80s, I think probably late 80s. Um, she had a single out and it was an album after, this is a compilation. She had an album out called Blast the Human Flower and it had just been released and they were playing the song Daisy on the radio, like the local college radio. And I love the song, her voice is amazing. And But I didn't know who it was. They didn't say on the radio who it was. And this is way back before Google and all that business. So I literally went to my local record store, uh, college record store, indie record store there in Gainesville, Florida, called Hide and Zeke's. And I just started in the bins and just went through CDs actually, because this is this was it was late '80s, so people were buying really buying CDs, and new releases were coming out more, more. Um, 
it was better chance that you were going to find it on CD if it was a new album than finding it on vinyl. So I was going through the CDs and I was just looking for the song Daisy and I started with the A's and just kept going through. Luckily her name begins with D or her last name is D so I didn't have to go through the entire alphabet. If her name was Zia or something then I probably never would have discovered uh, that's who that song uh, did because I didn't really hear it a whole lot after that. Anyway, uh, discovered Danielle Dax. She's wonderful. She's kind of a Susie, uh, Kate Bush kind of uh, person, a bit stranger, a bit more eclectic, eccentric kind of music, but really nice. Um, I bought the DV I bought the CD back then, and uh, it had a bunch of bonus songs. I didn't realize they were bonus songs. It was just a lot of songs. And so when I bought this on vinyl, I got home. There was the the record was on the back covering up the song list because it was used very gently used. This is a beautiful copy, and uh, it was covering up the song list. And I didn't realize until after I got home and pulled everything out and realized that the song list was not the same as the CD. So like three of my favorite songs of hers were not included on this, but that's okay. It's still, it's it's like this iconic album from my college days and it's just really nice to have it. Um, let's see, this is the lyric sheet that it came with. Really nice and just really clean used copy. Uh, it's on Sire Records, Black Vinyl. So Danielle Dex, uh, The Dark Adapted Eye. It's a compilation of a bunch of songs off of her first few albums. I've got one of them called Pop Eyes, but I don't, Pop Eye, I don't have the other ones though. Uh, just digitally, but not on vinyl. Uh, anyway, this next one, this is a really nice find. I didn't think I'd be able to get this, uh, an affordable copy of this album just as is, much less finding a Japanese import with an OV strip and everything. This is a beautiful copy, used copy. Uh, just clean and the vinyl is perfect. And, and with the added bonus, it's a Japanese uh, pressing of it with the OBI. So I was really happy to have, and it's just beautiful. It's like this nice black and white uh, photography with this kind of gold OBI. It's just a beautiful looking specimen, if you ask me. Uh, this is their second album, uh, Missing Persons, uh, Rhyme and Reason. Uh, 1984, I believe. Yeah. Um, my very first concert experience um, was a heavy metal band, a couple heavy, a couple of rock bands. And so I don't really like to talk about like how that was my first concert experience because it doesn't really fit, uh, you know, the kind of music that I listen to now. But uh, this was the second concert that I went to. And I like to start with this one as really my very first concert was this this album, this tour, uh, I was living in the Gulf Coast of Florida and some friends of mine and I drove up to Tampa to see them in concert and it was a great experience and seeing Terry Bazio play those drums, uh, it was awesome. Uh, this album did not do as well as Spring uh, Session M. Um, I think personally, I was disappointed in this album for one reason and that's the fact that Terry's using electronic drums instead of you know, regular drums, drum kit. And uh, that just kind of, it kind of cheesed out the sound of them for me. It kind of, what I loved about them was just kind of the, just the the power of his drums, uh, of his drum playing on that Spring Session album, Spring Session M album. And then to hear him do like the electronic drum thing on this album was just kind of a, it was a letdown. And I think a lot of fans maybe have kind of, went away from them as well. Uh, the songs aren't as good also as their first album, but there's some good songs on here. And, and it's, really, it's it's just a nice, good electronic uh, new wave album, um, if you're looking for that. But uh, it's just not, it's just a disappointment compared to their first one. But I, I still love this album. I, I'm not bashing this album. It's still awesome. It's still way better than so many other <laughs> new wave bands out there. It's just... Missing Persons are one of my favorites, so I was really happy to get this. So uh, this is the back, uh, what it looks like on the back. The band all looking all nice and quaffed. Uh, this is the uh, insert sleeve and it's got the lyrics and everything in English. And then you open this up and everything's in Japanese. So that's pretty sweet. I don't understand or read Japanese, but it looks really cool. And then it's the kind of rainbow capital uh, label there. Flimsy, not 180 uh, grand vinyl or anything like that. Uh, missing Persons, Rhyme and Reason, love it. 
This next one, um, I showed a, a, a I showed a record from this band a few videos ago, or maybe just one video ago, a couple anyway. And uh, it's the one album that I had to have by them, and that was uh, Masters of Reality. And if I were to have a second uh, record by this band, Black Sabbath, it would be this one, uh, Born Again. I, I love this album. This is a crazy freaking album. It's so it's just so weird. Everything about it, the stories behind it, and and uh, the fact that this is the only one that Ian Gillian from uh, Ian Gillen from uh, Deep Purple. It's the only Black Sabbath album that he did. Uh, this was the very last uh, Bill Ward album that he played on, um, and the band just kind of went off to do other things. But uh, this to me is such a God, it's such a heavy, heavy, heavy album. Uh, just really, like, just, I don't know, it's just dark and heavy and awesome. It just completely kicks ass. I think Ian does an amazing job. I, I, I like him a lot better than Ronnie James Dio. And, you know, not as much as Ozzy, but he's definitely the second best. Even though Ian says himself that he's the worst <laughs> Black Sabbath singer they ever had, I don't agree. I think he's incredible. I, his, his voice is different for Black Sabbath and his style is different, but it's just an awesome album. It's just really, I don't know, it's just so ferocious, this album. Um, the first song that they released off of this, Trashed, um, I remember seeing that video on, on MTV and I thought, wow, that is really awesome. That is a great freaking song. I think it was about, um, the song is about Ian taking Bill Ward's car and driving it around in circles and crashing it. And I guess he was had been drinking because he was trash. It was in a closed circuit kind of. He wasn't like out in the public driving. He was driving where the studio was and and crashed the car. And that's where trash came from. My favorite song though is Zero the Hero. I I love that. It's seven minutes long. It's just a badass song. I love that song. Um, really great. Uh, let's see. Do I have any other notes? Oh, they considered when they brought on Ian Gillian. They were considering Robert Plant. To replace Ronnie James Dio, uh, even Dave Dave Coverdale from White Snake, uh, just no. Ian Ian is so and somebody uh, somebody uh, put in like an I don't know somebody put in a, a I don't know a tryout tape or something or other uh, by the name of Michael Bolton. Uh, nobody knew who Michael Bolton was back in those days, but he actually tried out or at least sent in a tape or whatever to Black Sabbath to be their vocalist. What a freaking nightmare that would have been. Um, so anyway, I think that's it. Uh, oh, the, the devil baby, this thing, this photograph was just a black and white photo of this baby and they just tricked it out and put nails and horns and teeth and all that. But this is the same baby photo that was used for, uh, Depeche Mode's, uh, single New Life. If you go back and look at the New Life, uh, single, uh, from Depeche Mode's first album, uh, the song is called New Life. It's the same baby photo. So I thought that was pretty funny. Depeche Mode and Black Sabbath sharing the same uh, album cover stuff. So anyway, uh, love Black Sabbath. Love this album. Um, I don't care what anybody says. They'll trash it, say it's crap or whatever. But I think it's, I, I love it. Uh, this is the insert uh, there. And all the lyrics on the back. And it's on Warner Brothers, just black vinyl. So anyway, Black Sabbath, Born Again. Now this is the only channel I think on the VC where you will see Black Sabbath and the Go-Go's back to back. Uh, finally picked up a copy of this. I've always wanted to have this on vinyl. I didn't want to pay $30 or whatever for a new copy. It just I just wanted to find a nice used copy somewhere because it just felt right to just get a, an old used copy on IRS. And that's what I did. This is a uh, it's like a $3 buy at my local record store. Totally worth it. It's a beautiful copy. The cover looks fantastic. Um, insert, still in great condition as well. Uh, today, uh, 41 years ago today, the single Our Lips Are Sealed uh, came out on this day. So it's really kind of nice that I'm doing this video today. So there's the inners, whatever. Uh, we got the beat and Our Lips Are Sealed. Of course, everybody knows those two songs. Um, but I am looking, I actually don't really know this. I've never owned this album before. I've obviously listened to those two songs and I, I have vacation somewhere on uh, like a cassette or a CD or something, but I've never owned this album before and I'm looking forward to getting into it. Um, 
I listened to Our Lips Are Sealed just to sa sa see how the, the record sounds, and it sounds freaking amazing. Just really bright, just awesome sounding record. So very happy to have this, Go Ghost. Uh, that's what, 1980? 81 IRS Records. Uh, this next one, this kind of fills out my uh, incessant need to have all the Leica albums on vinyl and uh this is my third they have four and i don't think the fourth one is available on vinyl um two record set uh sounds was it sounds of the satellites uh their second full-length album it's two record set on two pure records the same label as early pj harvey and early stereo lab uh electronic um with a lot of like jazz infusion into it um, you'll hear all kinds of crazy instruments. It's mostly electronic, but there's a lot of really just excellent bass and percussion in this, as well as flutes. You'll hear a lot of flutes in this, but it's a fantastic, I can't say enough how great this band is and nobody seems to show it. The only person I see show these, these records by Leica is, uh, Derek Higgins. Uh, nobody else shows them, but, um, anyway. Just, I guess, the VC's best kept secret. Uh, lyric sheet there, and then two uh, pieces of vinyl on black vinyl. Uh, two pure records, two pure records, uh, Leica, Sounds of, the si uh, Sounds of the Satellites. Love that album, love all their albums. Uh, last one, whoa, my camera's flying around there. Last one, and uh, what a great way to end it is a Killing Joke. This is a repress. This is uh, Nighttime on Music on Vinyl. Um, the other copy of this I have is the original on EG, Editions EG, and uh, I've had it since 1985, that record. And, uh, you know, there's some pops and clicks on it, whatever. Um, it's probably not the best uh, available copy, so I wanted to get a nice, new, shiny, bright, uh, remastered uh, copy of it. And so here it is. Uh, love this. This is one of my all-time favorite albums. Definitely top 10 favorite album of any band. Um, Nighttime. Uh, beautiful. 1985. Uh, Killing Joke. Nighttime. It's got the single 80s. That's huge hit with all the kids. Um, let's see. It comes with an insert. My original copy. This is actually the inner sleeve. But on this version, it's just an insert printed two-sided. And then these nice little black poly-lined sleeves with the record on inside there, black vinyl. Um, yeah, I couldn't, I don't really, I'm not one to go out and buy multiple copies of albums, but, uh, you know, I, I do it for some bands because the album just gets played the hell out of, and I've had it for decades, and I think this is a, definitely a great one to have, finally. So, uh, on a good, on a good piece of slab of vinyl. So I think that's it. Yeah, that's all. That's all my vinyl finds I have to show. Uh, check out my other video I posted earlier today, where I talk about um, ten albums that uh, are near perfect, and I go in and I bash one song off of each album that I don't really care for. And if it weren't for that one song, it would be an absolutely perfect album. Um, I have so many of those types. This will be one of them. This will be a future uh, addition to that series when I get to whatever category I decide to put this in. Post-punk, I don't know what I'm gonna call this uh, at the time, but whatever genre I decide to put this in, this will definitely be one of them. And uh, I'm not even sure if it's near perfect. I think it is perfect. I, I used to not really care for Love Like Blood or Kings and Queens, but the more I've listened to them lately, I, I'm really I really don't understand what fault I had with those two songs. Uh, it's kind of silly. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Stay hydrated. It's hot as hell here in uh, Phoenix. It's like 120,000 degrees. And uh, just stay safe. And thanks for watching. And I love you guys. And I'll see you soon.